I don't want to say I'm like quitting YouTube because that's kind of dramatic. Hello folks, welcome back to my channel. It's Megan, if you're new here, hello. <laughs> and if you've been around for a while, thank you so much. You know, this month is my two year anniversary of the YouTube channel and this summer in general is the two year anniversary of Great Lakes Supply Co, my company and the three year of having bought this scrambler. It's kind of a time I've been doing a lot of reflecting. <laughs> I've been just thinking about all this stuff I've been making online and what kind of my intentions with it are and if it's working for me and all that jazz. But right now, I'm actually running a fun little errand. I'm going to this thrift shop in an area of Milwaukee called Bayview. Oh, <laughs> there's like some construction happening right now. But I'm going to a thrift shop and doing a little pickup and I think a socially distant browse. That's the kind of modern era of thrifting and making purchases and stuff is that it's a lot of contactless pickup, <laughs> looking at things online, sending people DMs, and then also now doing some limited browsing. So I love getting things secondhand and thrifted whenever possible and vintage because for the most part, I like to be pretty conscious of when I buy things brand new. When I do buy things new and stuff, I like to buy ethically sourced and from small, medium, and local businesses. I mean, that probably calls a question, <laughs> the things that I'm selling on my site. And yes, I ethically source my t-shirts and stuff. I'm running a little bit late for this consignment experience. Hopefully it's cool. There's a lot of construction on Water Street right now. It's construction season everywhere. I think this is also part of the 5G that's being laid down. Actually earlier they, they accidentally cut like a fiber optic cable in a lot of business class internet is out right now. I don't know who did it, <laughs> but I have a feeling it's some of this construction. But anywho, yeah, on the topic of the YouTube channel, so here's the thing about me. <laughs> and if you've seen some of my past videos, you definitely understand this as I've been explicit about it, but I'm an introverted person. It means that a lot of social experiences kind of tax me. And honestly, sometimes social experiences really confuse me. Like sometimes I don't understand why people behave the way they do. And sometimes I offend people. I've had like a lot of experiences where I've accidentally offended people. And I'm not saying anything, anything controversial. It's just that, you know, the way I joke or maybe my deadpan delivery, I think people sometimes can't figure out where I'm coming from and they think like that I don't like them and I'm also very sensitive so when I'm in a room I will often get an abundant feeling of whether or not people want me there or like me there. Some of it is confirmation bias, you're like reading too much into things. But then some of it is like yeah man like some people just don't really dig you that much. <laughs> and so all that is to say is that I'm feeling like I'm very much in like an introverted headspace lately. You'd think with this pandemic and all the social distancing, I would be hurting for human connection. But to be honest, I have been having a really nice time not getting caught up in too much stuff. Uh, it's been really nice to be able to focus on my family, myself, making things. I've done a lot of videos lately uh, and that's been pretty labor intensive. And then, you know, trying to, of course, still make money during all of this. But the YouTube channel is an interesting bisection of all these things because I really like making things online. I like making visuals. <laughs> I have been doing like photography and graphic design, all this stuff for a long time. And so I really also like making the visuals <laughs> for videos, filming other people. I like writing video essay ideas. I like editing videos. I think that's a lot of fun. But if I'm perfectly honest, I don't like being on camera. Moto vlogging is a little bit different as with moto vlogs. I don't know. I kind of just feel like I'm talking to myself in my own head and there's none of that like on camera kind of persona stuff. 
I don't feel like as watched or I feel a little bit more like a character because I've got the helmet on and I don't know I just really dig the anonymity of it obviously you guys know what I look like but it's cool like I'm way more willing to be stupid with the helmet on than without the helmet it's my little fishbowl it's a security blanket <laughs> and so I've been uh, thinking about the channel and the fact that you know I've made I want to say 70 videos that are public right now and like a lot of it like 70 videos that I'm really proud of except for one of them <laughs> I think it's been a good time now to reevaluate gosh how long you've been staring at the ground <laughs> to reevaluate whether or not this is something that I want to continue doing with like a lot of regularity because I've been trying to be pretty consistent lately I'm thinking that I'd like to take a a step back from it. I don't want to say I'm like quitting YouTube because that's kind of dramatic and I do have a lot I have a couple more ideas I definitely want to make for videos but I think um, I'm in a space right now where I'm not really I'm not trying to be like me online if that makes any sense this could be just like so unrelatable and that's another thing sometimes I think about my channel is I'm like I don't know hopefully people relate to me and that is a good thing and content doesn't have to objectively be relatable to be good but I do wonder if I don't have that relatability factor I really like making videos for like kind of the art of it and for the exercise of it for the video making of it storytelling I love doing the really kind of fun edits <laughs> that I've done on videos and man that's time intensive so you know the fact that the channel isn't lucrative makes you know it relegates it to a kind of a hobby territory Obviously, it does help um, get eyeballs on some of the other things I do do that are monetized. But it's a lot of labor considering. And I really like doing it, but I don't want to I don't want to not like doing it. I don't want to start making things just to, in the hopes that they go viral or, you know, just to kind of appease the algorithm. It's kind of just not my vibe. And then some people do like they do a great job of being themselves, being authentic, making great content that also the algorithm likes. And, that's that's super cool that they're able to do that but I haven't really been able to hit that stride unfortunately oh my gosh the traffic situation right now uh, I can't believe with this mount too I'm hitting all this bumpy road geez I've really picked quite the time to moto vlog anywho <laughs> so yeah that's where I'm at I figured honestly I could have just carried on regular and not said anything but I figure it can't hurt to be to let you guys know what's going on and I, another thing I kind of struggle with is this balance between vulnerability and like privacy and security. I think a lot about how oh, I have to take all these extra steps to like make sure I'm safe and make sure that I'm not saying too much online or that I'm putting myself at risk because the channel's still small right now, but who knows what little breadcrumbs I'm laying down for later. And I do feel that Right now the channel is at this size and juncture where if I did want to just bail <laughs> and disappear into the wilderness, I still could. And I kind of like that power. I think of what happens when people have really big YouTube channels and they have big followings. It's like, how can you be unrenowned anymore? I don't really like the side effects of what comes with a very successful channel. So, I mean, I've liked <laughs> that I can cruise in a kind of middle ground of like, successful small channel or like you know moderately successful with this like continued small growth that's really cool but you know the internet's the wild west and you really can't control what's going to happen things can go viral overnight and to be honest i ever since making that video about virality and i think about this kind of stuff this is like virality is messy and i kind of just I like peace and quiet, man, and I like I like just being online with a small group of people, with my friends, with people who are, I don't want to say like like-minded because I try to follow people with a lot of different perspectives and I think a lot of variety of people follow me. I know they do because my comments can be really all over the place, but I like that and it's cool that it's a diverse smattering of people, but then at the same time it's also not because <laughs> it's not the people that are like me uh, statistically. So I feel like it's the elephant in the room that none of the female motor vloggers are talking about, or maybe they mentioned it a little bit, but most of the audience is male. The audience is 90% male. And 
obviously, you know, you guys are getting some sort of value from this content. And we must, we obviously have a few things in common because you uh, enjoy the topics that I talk about. And I think a lot of us have similar values, which is cool. But sometimes it gets a little bit disheartening making content that's viewed primarily by a bunch of guys. I mean, did I say disheartening? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, every so often I'm just like, ugh. It's the male gaze. You're learning about that in art history. G-A-Z-E, not G-A-Y-S. <laughs> but it's just permeating everywhere. And man, like, you go out in public. It's nice for the internet to not be a space or to, like, have little zones where you don't get subjected to that. And the internet doesn't get to be that. And a public presence on the internet doesn't get to be that. I know, I'm just riffing about all this stuff. There's just this whole kind of world. There's a lot that goes in behind the scenes and a lot of things to consider. There's a lot of things I'm super careful about online. But in the same token, I think I'm just getting like a little bit fatigued by, uh, honestly, just by human beings. Cause you know, I said, I said that some of it has to do with male audience, but I don't know if like a female audience would solve any of it. It's just like another, you know, set of people. But it is cool. My favorite things are messages from young women or women in general who are either getting into writing from my videos or just like appreciating that a woman is making videos. And obviously it's cool when guys do that too, but I'm not gonna lie to you, I have my defenses up anytime I see a guy DMing me and there have been times when I thought it was a girl DMing me and then it wasn't and then I'm like oh now I'm trapped in this exchange that I don't want to be in and it's a lot of um it's a lot of brain space and energy I think that's one thing is I decided to go ham and work on the channel a lot this pandemic era but now I want to kind of move to working on different projects or prioritizing different projects I want to get back into self-portraits so that kind of stuff will be on Instagram it is still content making and then I also want to um, do more client work. I haven't been working on as many websites. Well, I've been working on my own website. Now that that's done, I've got a lot more time freed up to work on client websites. And it's just something I really like doing. I like consulting and helping people with web. And that, uh, that makes money. <laughs> so I love supporting myself <laughs> and not dipping into my savings. But it's been a cool, little couple months i think i've made a lot of things that i'm really proud of so i've made some cool content i have a couple other ideas but i think i'm just going to be like less on the camera i think they might be fewer moto vlogs and i think i'm going to do more creative also like more long form stuff that like not long form where it's like a long video but stuff that takes more time to put together because i've got some really cool ideas I don't know, it's just, <laughs> things might be exactly the same, and I might just, you know, take a nap and, and feel better, but I've been kind of thinking about this stuff for a couple days, and oh my gosh, I almost had like a pure blissful moment thinking of like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna quit the channel, <laughs> I'm just gonna tell everyone that I quit and just disappear, and I'm like, that sounds so nice, it's like, um, have you heard of the sand mandala? It's this thing that monks do, not like Catholic monks, but other monks. They do these sand mandalas, these really elaborate pieces of art that are just made out of sand. And it takes them hours and hours and I think days on end to lay down these sands in this decorative pattern on like the floor of a monastery or whatever. And then they just sweep it away. <laughs> and from like a strange perspective, I'm like, this channel is my sand mandala and I'm going to sweep it away. <laughs> But I wouldn't delete the channel. I think it's just like sometimes I wonder if I've said all the things I need to and at this point it's just me kind of... I don't want to overstay my welcome so to speak. I think some things are good as a small project and some things are great in longer form. So point to all this battling is that things might, you know, they, they might change a wee bit but I'm still down to talk to you guys. I think I just don't have the brain space. I feel very divided when I try to do all of these things. And right now I want to do things that are more focused on my career. I don't really want to be a full-time YouTuber, so it doesn't really make sense for me to try to keep up a super consistent upload schedule. So anyways, obviously it, it's a cool time in our lives right now because there's a lot of women making motorcycle content. So if you want, you should drop your favorite female motovlogger in the comments or your favorite motovlogger in general, like there are no rules here. But 
Oh, that's where it is. Shoot, I just missed the spot. Oh, I was babbling. Anyways, I'm here at Plume, so hopefully I can take a little bit of footage of me picking up my stuff. Oh, of course now I'm like, oh, okay. I think I'm, yeah, I'm a little bit late. Oh, because I was kind of derping around. Oh, I could have gone through that alley. I'm going to go through the alley. Anyways, if I don't see you guys after I pick up the product, <laughs> after I pick up the, the cool little things, and then I don't know who, else, who knows what else I, I'll find, but I'll have more money if I don't find anything while I'm here and I just go back and make a little money at work. Thanks so much for watching. You guys are really awesome. And, you know, subscribe. <laughs> who knows what will pop up. I have a couple more things that I'm really excited about making. I hope that I continue to have little ideas here and there and want to post stuff. But I'm thinking there will be a little bit of a break coming up. A little bit of a siesta. I think it'll be good. It'll be restful. It'll be rejuvenating. And it's the right move. So thanks so much for watching. Till next time, ride safe.